Hi there everyone, today I'm joined by Steph and Logan from Call Me Ishmael, which is an amazing website for anyone who loves books and the stories of books. There's a link on the screen and in the description, go and check it out. But when two of my friends from America were coming to London, I said, you've got to come to the Royal Society. White Gloves of Destiny, card catalogue. Unfortunately, James is on holiday, so you've got me with the camera today, but we're going to do it anyway. Who's going first? Thumb war. Okay. One, two, three, four. I declare a thumb war. <laughs> I'm first. Oh, all right. Fine. <laughs> fine. All right, here we go. So, right. so Steph, you've got to close your eyes. Yes. Think about I'm it. I'm going low, I think. Low? Yeah. Is that... All right, yeah, that's fine. Oh, gosh. How am I doing so far? Okay. How, right, now, good how form, deep? Good form. I'm going deep. Deep. You're not going that deep. You haven't opened it very far. Oh, really? <laughs> I don't want to break it. No, all right. That feels right. On two stones in the omasum of a horse. I'm thrilled there's a horse. I'm confused about omasum. So here's Keith Moore, head librarian, is going to come and fill out. Hello. How did I do, Keith? Call slip, Keith. It's classified papers. Oh, classified. <laughs> Straight for do the I secrets of the Royal Society. I mean, it feels like I set the bar pretty high. That's I don't good. Know if you feel yeah. this, but that's good. I feel great. All right, let's swap it over now, Logan. Eyes closed. Where Thoroughly. Are you, where are you going? I need to let destiny decide. Is that barometer going off up there? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> okay, then the it must be here. Explorers. All right, I feel good about this choice. Does anyone ever double back and choose a different? No, this is the one. This is the one. All right. Index finger. All right. Ready? Yep. Nelson Peter, Durham, 16th of December, 1680, about a comet. I like it. It's terse. We know exactly what we're talking about here. It's certainly an old one. Logan, right? I think your only chance is if you get a picture of the comet. Otherwise, I think you're going to lose this one. <laughs> I don't know. I'm thinking um, Hallie. I'm thinking that Hallie's going to make a cameo in my video. I don't know if the timing's right on that, but... Okay. All right, we're going to go downstairs. Let's go. Okay. It smells like books. Yeah, we got lots of books. I'm just excited to learn the proper definition of Omasa. All right. Here we are. All right. Okay, so Steph, you had classified papers 15. Yes. It's just here. Go ahead. Thank you. This is the classified paper sequence. It's just material from the 17th century classified by oh. subjects. So you've got 15, uh, which is zoology. Okay. That's your volume. Oh, thank you. Okay. Logan. All right. Logan's got a letter book copy. So let's go this way. Letter books. Eight. That's your volume. Beautiful. Let's go see what Just you've got. Just a little sneak peek. <laughs> All right, then we're ready to go. All right. Where okay. So we've got classified papers 15. It's part two of that, so we're going to have to go into it a little bit. Okay. Let's have a look. Just see if we can. Oh, that's a good one. That's a really nice snake there. Is that yours? Bit of a viper. No, oh, it isn't. No, I'm afraid. No, 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 no. But I think so, that things adjacent to mine should also count towards mine in the tallying. Well, it is adjacent to yours because uh -huh. I think yours is the next one. Ah, so this is paper number eight, actually. So this is an account of a stone taken out of the stomach of a horse at Boston in New England. That's not yours. Yeah. Uh, yours is number nine. Well, hang on. There were two stone in horse papers back to back. Yeah. <laughs> Yep, that's Naturally. right. Um, good so, cataloging, clearly. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so this is um, this is your paper okay. of two stones found in the omasum of a horse at Kettering <laughs> in Northamptonshire. So this stone, which I presented to you at the last meeting of the Royal Society, so they actually brought a stone <laughs> in and presented it for the Royal <laughs> okay. Society repository, was found with another that weighed two ounces more mm -hmm. in the omasum of a horse belonging to a baker at Kettering. He was 16 years old. Uh, that's a horse, no, not, the, not the baker, I think. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and one of the best and briskest horses he ever had. He was perfectly well the morning he died. Oh dear, mm. so this is a bit of a sad uh -huh. story, I'm afraid. Got dark quick. Uh -huh. When the stones broke into the gut, he fell down and died in great pain and torment. Oh, this is a very sad story. Yeah. I'm sorry about this. This it is just really sad. so nice with the baking. Yeah, I know, <laughs> yeah. Uh, the two stones, when first taken out, weighed a pound and a quarter more than they do now. Hmm. Uh, they oozed and dropped water out of the sides. This is, this is getting, this is getting graphic, more unfortunate. Right? They had a strong smell. <laughs> oh, this is, this is really... Uh, yeah. It's a full sensory experience. Yeah, it is, yeah. yeah. Uh, and, like, and hang on a second, let's not forget, 
He then brought these stones into the Royal Society to show them. Yeah. That's right. And to sniff them, presumably. And, and yeah. to compare it from the previous one that he brought into the Royal <laughs> yeah. Society. I'm back. Yeah. <laughs> so they had a strong smell, like that of horse dung. <laughs> well. Mm. Mm. Uh, whether this be not of the same nature as the bezoa, so that's another kind of stone, and neither it may not be of use in physic. Ah, right, so they're actually going to, they're thinking about using this as a medicine. Oh, so this, specifically yeah. the ones that yeah. come out of the horse or like just generally before they've well, they, they, A medicine for humans. That's right, right. so, they, so they, they generally use stones in mm. medicine, uh, but this stone that they've just taken out of a dead horse that mm -hmm. smells like horse dung is just the thing to cure you. Oh. Really? Apparently. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, the penmanship is incredible. Yeah, it's beautiful. Mm. Yeah, I remember some years since to have seen a ball about the same bigness of this stone <laughs> found in the maw of a cow. It was light and spongy in the hand, and when opened, it proved to be a ball of hair. <laughs> we have a hairball. <laughs> you know, we have ancient yeah. documentation of a hairball. Nice. Yeah. yeah, I think that's a that's a good pick. It's certainly not yeah. a boring one. Well, no, 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 that's 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 good. Steph, you have definitely chosen the most disgusting one we've had so far. <laughs> yeah. You're so welcome. I'll be back anytime. Yeah. Yeah. So, on a one to ten, where would you rank oh, it? Oh, I think this is this has got to be an eight. Uh, yeah. Well, no pictures, Keith. No picture. Well, we did have the snake at the beginning Who's though. So, you you know. <laughs> but we have a comet to come, which is comets are pretty cool. All right. So you know, let's Cooler let's just than see. Cooler hairballs. I don't know. What have we got? Okay, well, this is not bad at all. Oh, so, yeah. so this is uh, Mr. Peter Nelson mm -hmm. to Mr. Hook about a comet. Yes. So this is this is Robert Hook. Of yes. Course. He's uh, uh, writing to Hook, presumably as secretary of the Royal Society by this stage. No Here we are. pictures. No. I'm afraid. No. no pictures. Okay. Uh, we'll have to use our imagination. Yeah, <laughs> that's very good. So here we go. Uh, and this is a nice fair copy because it's the copy that the Royal Society made from the original paper. I know not whether on account of the comet from this place, especially such an imperfect one as I am able to give you, be worth the trouble of this letter. It is. It is, mm. definitely. But what he says is, I, I give you such remarks of this stupendous phenomenon. <laughs> yes. There you go. Stupendous. That's stupendous. the seven. Into an eight. So yesterday, being December the 15th, it began to appear towards the west, a little before mm. five in the evening. The star itself being near the horizon appeared pale and dusky through the vapours. But a mighty stream of clear light issued thence to the length of about 45 or 46 degrees and of about four degrees in breadth, so four degrees, okay. and four degrees of the sky. Right for a great part of it. So he, he describes it as a movable pillar of light mm. or to such as apprehended as a flat superficies. It seemed like a web of cloth. This is quite purple prose compared to other comet papers we've read, That's, isn't it? Well, it's, it's quite descriptive and he's trying to give people the idea of, of what the thing looked like. He couldn't take a photograph, of course. He mm -hmm. could have done a drawing there, couldn't mm -hmm. he? Really? <laughs> but at least he's doing the next best thing and just giving a little description here. Why draw when you have such command of yeah. Of language, words. well, yeah, there we go. The star descended our horizon as near half an hour after five as I could observe. So it wow, so, 30, so we've got the 30 minute mark now. Yeah, and he gives a position being placed in a branch of the Via Lechia above the head of the Sagittarius, streaming over Aquila and pouring towards the star in the swan's wing of 33 degrees north. So he's, he's positioning it according to mm -hmm. the constellations, mm -hmm. which is quite nice. Yeah. This uh, all takes place in Durham. In, okay. In the northeast of England. In space above Durham. Yeah. In space above Durham, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the, observa the observation yeah. takes place in Durham. Yeah, okay. I find this really captivating, though. Yeah, it's really yeah. beautiful. And so this is just a collection of letters, all of this nature. Just you see a natural event, you send a letter. You write to the Royal Society describing yeah. it. The letter gets read at one of the meetings. And if the fellows are suitably impressed by it, it gets published in the Philosophical Transactions. Mm. Can I lay down a challenge to the people watching this video? Let's see if we can figure out what comet that was. Uh, yeah, absolutely. We've got yeah. a date. We've, we've got, got a beautiful description. We've got, we know where it was in the sky at what time. Yeah. If it's a periodic comet, we might be able to figure out if this is a regular one. Mm -hmm. And we need to find that horse stone. Yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah, it was Can a I issue We're another also accepting hairballs. There is a hairball described. 
Keith, that, that stone presumably wasn't kept in the archives, that horse stone. It would have been put in the repository of the Royal Society. Now, when the repository was wound up, everything that was left was sent to the British Museum. Uh, so that horse stone could be somewhere in the British Museum. If it's fairly solid, it might well have survived in a way that um, uh, other specimens might have degraded. So you never know. Mm. Wow. I wonder if it uh, maintained the aroma so elegantly described in my letter. Yeah, that would be good. <laughs> Logan and Steph are very competitive people. Mm -hmm. They've been wondering for days who would do the best with the white gloves of destiny. Yeah. I'm going to make you the official judge. Okay, so this is a tricky one. Uh, I'm going to get, because it's a comet, this is very nice, and because it's to Robert Hooke, this is very good. I'm going to give this a seven. But oh, if, if, the, if, the, oh. if we can identify that comet, it could go up a little bit. So, you know, I, I think the challenge it, it issue. rests on objectivity mm. viewers right. as to whether you're going to win or not. Mm. This is a classic case of one horse stone weighing a little bit more <laughs> than a comet. This is a classic case of Keith <laughs> passing the book. <laughs> but for now, Steph, you're the winner. Congratulations, Steph. Well, thank you. Yep. Thank you, Keith. Well done. Appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> Loser. <laughs> This is a first. I, I've never been someone's virtual hands before. Yep. Can we start in the bottom corner of that left-hand side there? Bottom that corner of the sense. left? Yeah. Uh, Down here? No, so on, on the other side of that section. Other side of this section, so here? No one there. That's it? Yep, yeah. good. Open that drawer. Please. Oh. Yeah, here we go. Let's go right to the back. <laughs> right. right to the back, say when? When. Yeah. Right. Okay. What have we got? Ah, so we have the sun's parallax deduced from observations of the recent transit of Venus, 1772. It's in Latin. How's your Latin? I haven't studied it for about 15 years, but we'll see how we go. <laughs> this right. is good. All right. Do you want to do a second pick? Where do you want, to, right. where do you want to go second time?